Hi, and welcome to the Shoulder and Arm Health Channel, where we discuss the latest and best in shoulder and arm care. I'm Dr. Roger So, and I'm a board-certified orthopedic surgeon. In today's video, I'd like to talk to you about a very common problem known as biceps tendonitis. Now, biceps tendonitis is such a common problem, it's probably the most common problem that I see in my clinic. As you may know, the biceps has two heads. There's the short head of the biceps, and there's the long head of the biceps. Now, anatomically, the short head of the biceps is more is closer to the body, and, it, and the short head inserts here on a location known as the coracoid process, which is a projection of your shoulder blade. And the long head of the biceps actually takes more of a indirect route. It comes upwards and it turns 90 degrees to enter the shoulder and it inserts actually deep inside the shoulder on top of an area known as the labrum, specifically the superior labrum. Now it's this arrangement that makes the biceps tendon prone to injuries. The biceps tendon number one is a skinny tendon and it doesn't have a great blood supply. And secondly, it actually has a lot of tendency to rub here on the lesser tuberosity, this bony projection here at the corner where the biceps enters the shoulder. The biceps tendon can also get damaged as it inserts here on the top of the socket in that portion of the area called the labrum. And if that gets torn, that's known as a superior labrum anterior posterior tear or slap tear for short. What are the symptoms? People who have biceps tendonitis will usually describe the pain as pain right here in the very front of the shoulder. They can usually put their finger right on it. What's more, they usually describe the pain as getting worse with any sort of reaching activity, any lifting activity, and specifically rotational activities such as swimming, tennis, or if they're a thrower, the cocking position as they're throwing the ball will tend to cause them a lot of pain. The symptoms can either be acute, meaning that they've been there for a very short amount of time, or more frequently when I see patients, the pain's been there for quite a while. Patients will often come to tell me and say, hey, it's been six months, I thought this would get better, but the pain is still there. It's right here in the front of my shoulder and I'm having a difficult time sleeping, exercising, and maintaining my level of activities that I enjoy. So why does it happen? The biceps tendon, and specifically the long head of the biceps tendon, is prone to injuries. Part of that is due to the anatomy of this area. The long head of the biceps tendon actually curves almost 90 degrees as it enters the shoulder. It curves around this bony projection of the humerus called the lesser tuberosity. Now the lesser tuberosity is important because it's an attachment point for other structures and ligaments and tendons. It also actually is the restraint for the biceps tendon so it doesn't slip out of this groove. As the shoulder moves up and down and, and rotates, the biceps tendon is mostly stationary but it can get rubbed on by the lesser tuberosity and the surrounding ligaments in this area. That can cause a tendonitis, which is just an inflammation of the coating or sheath of the tendon. It can also cause fraying on the tendon, which is actually some damage to the tendon fibers. And if this problem goes on long enough, the biceps tendon can become uh, damaged to the point where it actually ruptures. And this is usually the uh, location where it ruptures. In addition to this, the biceps tendon has a flared out root that anchors onto the socket of the shoulder blade. This area is called the superior labrum. And when it gets torn, that's called the superior labrum anterior to posterior or slap tear. When I see a patient in the clinic, one of the first things I'm going to do is talk to them about their symptoms and I'll ask them their history. Did they have an injury? Or did it just start from working out or excessive use? I try to establish whether this is an early stage problem or if this problem has been chronic. The other thing that we do is a physical examination. There are some specific maneuvers that we do. One of the most reliable ones, however, is to just simply put my finger on the groove of the bicep and feel, and sometimes kind of flick the tendon, and if that recreates the pain, that's usually a pretty good giveaway that this is the problem. The second thing that we do is a, a maneuver called the O'Brien test. Now, O'Brien test is done by taking the patient's arm that hurts, and we take them and we have them extend the arm out completely straight and bring the arm across the midline and then turn the thumb downwards. I'll have them hold an isometric contraction then, and I will push down while they resist me. If that recreates the pain, and if secondly, if the pain is actually relieved by externally rotating the arm, that's a positive O'Brien sign and it points to the biceps and the labral complex. Another test we do is called the Jurgensen test. Now during this test, I'll have the patient hold their palm flat upwards towards the ceiling and I will try to turn their hand against their resistance. By doing this, we're activating the long head of the biceps and if that recreates the pain, again, that points to the biceps tendon as a source of their problems. Many times patients will come to me with imaging already. They'll either have an x-ray or a lot of times they'll have an MRI of this location. Now an MRI isn't always very helpful in diagnosing a biceps tendon problem. It can sometimes show increased fluid around this area or if it's a really obvious case of a torn root or labrum, we can sometimes see that on an MRI. But many times 
we rely more on the physical exam findings to diagnose this problem. In early stages of biceps tendonitis, the problem can be reversed by a period of rest and by focusing on good shoulder blade mechanics and usually a course of physical therapy, we can usually improve the symptoms significantly or get them to go away completely. In some selective cases, we can also place a cortisone injection into the biceps tendon sheath. I don't like to make a habit of doing this because repeated cortisone injections can actually weaken the tendon and increase the chance that it will rupture. Now, in some patients, they've tried all of these options. They've tried physical therapy, and in some cases, they've even had a cortisone injection, and their pain is still there. What are their options? Well, in, at this point, usually they need something that's going to completely resolve this problem. There are a couple of options, and one of them is called the biceps tenotomy. It, it may seem strange, but one of the ways this is treated is to simply go in and artificially create a rupture of the biceps. I don't do this surgery very often, and in fact, I more often will see patients that have done this to themselves. They will, be, they will have had pain in their shoulder for some time, and as they were lifting something heavy, they'll feel a pop in the arm, and now their, bar, their arm will have a, a deformity, but by the time they come to see me in the clinic, they'll often tell me, you know, I, was, I almost canceled the appointment because the pain I've been having for the last year or so is actually gone now, and I have this funny bulge in my arm, but that doesn't bother me too much. And in some notable cases, there have been some NFL players, uh, quarterbacks, like Brett Favre was a famous example of one, who had the surgery done where they actually went in and cut the tendon on purpose so as to let the biceps tendon drop and no longer rub on that sharp corner and no longer pull on any of the roots of the torn labrum. And famously, he went back to play football during the same season. Um, now, of course, there were financial incentives for him to keep playing that season and they were chasing a playoff, but in the average person, this is not usually the way we, that I treat this problem. I usually will do a surgery called a biceps tenodesis. Now, biceps tenodesis simply means that we detach the biceps tendon from the upper root, so it's no longer pulling on any torn or damaged labral tissue. In addition, we will fix the tendon to the humerus, and this is called the tenodesis. The tendon is no longer gonna be allowed to rub here on that sharp corner, and by securing it here with either a screw or we can sometimes do a tenodesis to the pectoralis major tendon, by doing that, you basically end any of that rubbing that used to happen here on that sharp corner of the humerus. That is an outpatient surgery that takes place using an arthroscope, which is a minimally invasive technique. We place a camera inside the joint, and this is a fiber optic camera that lets us see in high definition all the different parts of the shoulder. It allows us to do the surgery through small incisions. We use other instruments called cannula to then pass anchors and um, suture tendons and things of that nature. Unlike previous surgeries in the past, which involved an incision on the shoulder where uh, muscles were being retracted, this allows us to do it in a minimally invasive way, which minimally also manipulates the shoulder muscles and helps to reduce the trauma of the surgery. That type of surgery requires general anesthesia. The anesthesiologist will be there, and it's another trained doctor who can be there at the same time of the surgery, and they will usually also offer a nerve block, which will help to keep the arm um, out of pain for the first 20 to 24 hours. And after that, we usually will offer patients a narcotic pain medication. One of the implants I use is made by this company called Arthrex. And this is a video showing the way that we actually place the biceps tendon into the socket and secure it there with the screw. An alternate way of doing this is to connect the tendon directly to the pectoralis muscle. We use that more often in cases where the tendon has either ruptured and the patient wants it to look more normal or in cases where we're trying to have the fastest recovery possible because it heals faster from tendon connecting to tendon rather than tendon healing to bone. After surgery, patients recover at home and they start a course of physical therapy pretty quickly. The physical therapists are mostly focused on what's called passive range of motion. The difference between passive and active range of motion can be best explained that if you're using your power, your own power, to raise the arm, that's called active motion. Passive range of motion involves using either your other arm or the physical therapist helping you raise the arm. So rather than using your own power, you're having help with that motion. Physical therapists will mainly focus on passive motion for the first six weeks or so. Depending on how we fix the biceps tendon, we can gradually start increasing isometric uh, loading and then full resistance training usually starts after the three month mark. Now, although I give people the green light to do anything they want to do after three months, they generally have some restrictions until around the four or six months just from stiffness or ongoing weakness. However, as patients progress beyond that, they tend to report that their pain is gone and that their range of motion and strength is now returning to completely normal. Of course, there are risks of any surgery like this. 
One of them that we discussed earlier, or I alluded to, is that the biceps tendon can rupture. And even in some cases where we've done the surgery, the biceps tendon can come loose and create a Popeye deformity. In those cases, patients have a choice. They can either choose to live with it and be like Brett Favre or others who actually purposely did the surgery to cut the biceps tendon, or they can have a surgery to reconnect the biceps tendon. In about 20% of cases where the biceps tendon is ruptured, patients will report that they have a crampy sensation as they're twisting with the arm, specifically like if you're twisting on a screwdriver, that's more common. And so it's more likely that we'll need to do a revision surgery in those cases. But in the vast majority of people, it either doesn't happen or if it happens, they can tolerate it quite well. In many cases, patients come to me, they're frustrated, they've tried everything else, and they want a permanent fix. And a lot of times I'm able to offer that to them by doing this surgery called the biceps tenodesis. This is one of the more common surgeries that I do, and we've had a great track record of success with patients having full return to activities. So to review, in today's video, we talked about the most common cause of shoulder pain that I see called biceps tendonitis. Biceps tendonitis usually causes pain in the front of the shoulder. It can be treated in the early phases by physical therapy, and in selective cases, we can do a cortisone injection to help reduce the pain and help the patient to participate more fully with physical therapy. In some cases, the damage is too severe and a surgery can be required. That surgery is called a biceps tenodesis. It takes anywhere from four to six months to recover fully from a biceps tenodesis, but patients tend to get full recovery and are able to return to full sports and other activities without any restrictions. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to learn more about shoulder and arm health, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you and I'll see you on the next one.